Hello and welcome back to Tips and Time Savers. I'm Danny Rocks and in today's lesson I'm going to demonstrate how you can use the indirect function in Excel to select values from a second drop-down list that are based upon the values in your first drop-down list. All right, let's come over here and take a look at our scenario. We have an employee database. Over here in column C I've used data validation picked from a list to have the departments that are appropriate for this company. So I can just select one of the values for the department. What I I want to be able to do is create a second drop down list that will bring me up a set of values that is triggered by the department. So create a drop down for the second list that is dependent upon the selection in the first list. All right, just to quickly review data validation, what I've first done is I've used the name range for the list for data validation over here. So notice that these labels over here are a name range that I use for the list departments. Now we can select one of those names for the department. What we need to do now is create a second drop down list and use data validation. But before we do that, we need to name some ranges over here. So we need to name the titles. Now, one way to name a range is to come over here and just select the values and give it a name up here in the name box. So accounting in this case. Make sure you hit enter. Another way to create a name range is to select the label that you're going to use for the name and the values. Come over to the formulas tab on the ribbon in define names create from the selection. So we're going to use the label administrative which is in the top row to name these values as the administrative range. Now a shortcut is that we select the values as well as the label and then use control shift function 3. So you see it brings up that dialog box. It saves us quite a bit of time. Now let's do the same thing here for operations. Select the label that we want to use for the name as well as the values. Control Shift function 3. Click OK. One more uh, named range over here. Control Shift function 3 top row. All right now we're ready to go. I'll use Control Home to come over here to cell A1. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create data validation in one cell and then we'll copy it down to the other cells. So I come over here to the Data tab of the ribbon, over here in Data Tools for Data Validation. What I'm going to do is, for the Settings tab, Allow from a List. Unlike the previous lessons where I've shown you data validation and unlike what we did over here for the department, instead of using a list, I'm going to use a formula. I'm going to use the indirect function equals indirect left parentheses. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to point to the cell that is one column over in the same row. Now before I continue, notice that by default Excel makes this an absolute cell reference. I want this to be a relative cell reference, so I want to remove the dollar signs. One way to do that is to cycle through using the F4, the function for keyboard shortcut. So now I've made it a relative reference. Now I'm not going to go through the input message and the other elements of data validation. I've covered that in other lessons. I just want to make sure that on the error alert tab that I have selected the stop style. All right, click OK. Now what we will see is we will get a set of values in our second list that is going to be looking using the indirect function for the label, the text label that I have over here. So I can select Copy Editor. Now remember I only use data validation for one cell, so if I want to have this for the other cells in column D, let's first copy it, and then what I want to do is come over here, select these cells, I'll right mouse click and say Paste Special validation. I'm pasting the validation into these other cells. All right, so now let's change this from marketing to administrative and look at the list of values that I have. You see it's triggering, it's using the indirect function to look over here to this list which is one column over in the same row, so administrative assistant. Now when I come down here I'll put Beth into sales and now I get a different list in the data validation. So you see, I created the named ranges, but I used the indirect function over here in this data validation to give me a second list which is based upon the value over here. Now there is 
one drawback. There is one drawback. Let's say that Beth decides for whatever reason to transfer out of sales into accounting. You see the weak link? This doesn't automatically update. Remember, it's a drop-down list. So now when I come over here, I have to make sure that I take that second step and make that choice. Now, what if Beth decides that she's on a career path and she wants to be in every different department? Now she wants to come over into operations. Here's a way that you can flag any cell that doesn't meet your data validation rules. So again, come back to data, data tools, and in the dropdown for data validation, notice that we have circle in valid data. So you see, circling the invalid data, it quickly draws our attention that this is an incorrect selection. So of course I'd use my drop down and I changed the title that is one of the titles that's acceptable for the department. And then of course after I finish that I have to remember to come back to data validation and then clear the validation uh, circles. So uh, using indirect is a, it's, it's a really terrific formula. I actually have decided to break this lesson into two parts. So I'm going to create another lesson that will show you another way that you can use the indirect function in Excel. And this is typical of the tips that I offer on my DVD series. And I'll look for you in the next lesson.